this segment of the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us. Chief Engineer David Ainsley vacationing in the UP of Michigan. You bird. His big, his big three-week vacation once a so year. So jealous. And he's, he's in the fun. middle of it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know it. Great weather. Well, we've been talking about car sales, and we uh, touched a little bit on uh, the problems that new car dealers are having. They've got some cars on the lots for sale, uh, like 22 model years that they just can't just get just found rid that of. out. Yeah. yeah. We, we didn't have any clue about that. Um, but Carfax, you've all heard about Carfax. Uh, great service. Uh, I've used I think everybody has used them at some time or another. Patrick Olson joins us. Pat, it's good to see you again, my friend. Thanks for having me, guys. Well, thank you. So what's the state of car sales? Now, I know that you guys generally are into used cars, and uh, you do, and we'll get into all of that in a minute, but you also keep a, a, a close tab on what's happening in the new car market, don't you? Absolutely. Um, in fact, you know, it was al- almost just about a year ago um, today that we launched uh, new car listings on Carfax. But we've been watching um, you know, new car trends for years and years. Um, and it's an interesting time. There's more inventory than there's been since COVID, but still not as much as there was before COVID. So it can be a little dicey for both dealers and consumers out there. Well, I got news this well, actually, just yesterday, that Stellantis, uh, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, sales down 20 percent in the last quarter holy cow what's going on there well one of the things that stellantis did with during covid was they raised their prices more than their competitors did and and they had a lot of popular vehicles they had jeeps very popular uh their ram trucks do very well but i think now as um covid has gone away and and competitors have more options on the lot uh they've become the expensive uh, brands in the market. Well, now, to be fair, if you look at uh, Stellantis vehicles, their interiors are terrific looking. They're very high quality. But today, there's so many shoppers looking for affordability, and I think they're on the other side of that fence. Would they ever lower their prices? Let's just say for a, a Ram 1500, a, a high-end one, you know, one seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. Would the factory tell the dealer, hey, look, we know you got too many of them sitting on the lot. Would they ever say, we're going to have a, a fire sale, lower it by $10,000. We'll take the hit. There, there are times, and I, I don't know about Stellantis specifically, but there are absolutely times when automakers decide that, uh, they've reached too far, and they will cut a deal to uh, dealers, for example, and tying it to sales, right? If you can sell X number, we'll give you a spiff of X thousands of dollars per extra vehicle that you sell. Uh, because what the dealers don't want and what Stellantis ultimately doesn't want are too many cars sitting on lots. And so they will work with dealers to create incentives to try to get those things off. We see now even a lot more low-interest financing. I think we're going to see more uh, cashback rebates coming soon to get some of these vehicles off of the lots. And isn't this the biggest sales season of the year, typically? Well, actually, the biggest sales season of the year is around tax day. So uh, your uh, March, April, May is usually the highest selling point of the year. A lot of people take their tax refund and make that their down payment on a car. So summers can be a little sleepier. And then as we get back in the fall and the end of the year, we'll see another bump in sales. So Right now, it's a little harder for dealers to get people into the doors because they're, you know, they're worried about their vacation and, and hanging out with their kids. Well, that and the fact that interest rates are sky high, prices of yes. vehicles are sky high, EVs aren't uh, really making it happen uh, on the sales lots, uh, crossovers, uh, they're the big thing. I, I mean, there's so many factors in play here. Yeah. Well, what's interesting, you talk about EVs. Tesla sales are down, but everyone else who's not Tesla, their EV sales are way up to 20, 30%. Used EVs, if you want an EV, um, and they're not for everybody, but if you want an EV, now is a great time to look into a used EV. They're down like 20, 30% lower than um, internal combustion engine vehicles. Um, yep. And a part of that is because there's not a lot of infrastructure around to support them. But if you put a charger in at home, they could be a great alternative. Now, when you say EV, is it all electric EV that you're talking about or some of the hybrids, some of the plug-in EVs? Because yeah. there's there's people that uh, I know that have uh, a Tesla. Come yeah. time for that battery to maybe be going out or, hey, keep an eye on it. They traded it or got rid of the vehicles and they went back to an ice engine car. So yeah. uh, I don't know. Is that considered or is that why? Um, well, I think partly I think that 
even now we're still with electric vehicles. When I say EV, I mean pure electric. I think high, uh, plug-in hybrids are a great sort of bridge between internal combustion to electric. But when I'm talking about EV, I mean pure electric. And you know, as I said, they certainly aren't for everybody. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people have discovered that the, the national level of infrastructure for charging is not where it needs to be, even with the something like two and a half, three million EVs that are on the road today. Um, and so that, I think, is turning a lot of people off to, I want to, you know, like with a gas car, I can fill it up whenever I want, wherever I want. And that is not the case for a lot of uh, electric vehicles. Exactly. So what? where do we stand with the used car market right now? Is it flooded is it weak is it do we have do we have cars well we have more cars than we had a year ago which is great the downside though is back in 2021 in the second half of 2021 leasing kind of fell off the map um and leasing is great for used cars because you wind up with a lot of three-year-old maybe four-year-old cars that come off of leases and they are typically you know, they they have been mileage throttled, if you will, by their lease deal. And so they have you know, 20,000, 30,000 miles on them. They're usually in great shape. Um, in a normal depreciation cycle, they're, they're valued about 40 or 50% of the original price. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, but now, because leasing almost came to a stop in the second half of 2021, because of supply chains and other issues, now there isn't that flood of cars coming into what we call the certified pre-owned world and so there's not these high value really desirable cars and i think that's going to jack up prices in the next few months for used cars so how are things on carfax i mean i i have a used car let's just take yeah. my corvetta uh, no it's too old let's use one let's say a, a c7 corvette that sure. is from uh you know 2021 and yeah. um, and it's got forty thousand miles on it. Are there a lot of those cars being being placed on on Carfax? Uh, actually, we we do see a pretty good inventory from and again within the most recent year. So when we look at the last three model years, so uh, twenty three, twenty two, twenty one, we've got really good representation on Carfax for that. Um, and the the beauty of Carfax, as you guys know, is that you can see. How many owners has this had? So like that C7, is it on its first owner or third owner? And I would certainly want one that was on its first owner, you know, someone who's going to baby it. We can tell you whether or not it was a rental car, which the Corvette likely yep. is not. Um, we can tell you if it's been serviced regularly. You know, all these things that you really want to know before you're going to lay down, in the case of a C7, you know, 50, 60 grand for that car. Yeah. I, let's talk about the service records of a car. Yeah. You know, um how do you find out about the service record of a car? Because I may take my car over to Joe Blow's five and dime oil change place. Is he going to report that? Well, so we work with about 75% of all the uh, service shops in the United States who report the work that they've done on cars to us. And, And the important thing here is we know about it at a VIN level. We don't know about it at a personal level. So we never get personal information. All we get is info about the metal, about the car. Yeah. Um, but the beauty of that is as an owner, you can point to those service records and to the next potential buyer and say, look, I kept up with this, you know, and, and your car will be worth anywhere from a few hundred dollars more to a couple thousand dollars more than somebody who has no receipts for the work that they've had done. And of course, for, for buyers, Having that sort of, you know, health record for that car is crucially important in deciding, you know, is this the right place to drop 50 grand or is that the right place to drop 50 grand? How far back in the records do you go on a car? We, we go back to, um, in many cases, all the way back to the, to the birth of VINs, right, which is 1981. We don't obviously have very many cars that are that old, but if it has a 17-digit VIN from this country, um, we'll have records on it. Yeah, see, with, with Kylie's, we uh, got the Carfax on Kylie's, my granddaughter's car, and it started out as a uh, car for a company. It was a company car for yeah. some oil company. They sold it to an individual, and that individual traded it in and sold it back. So uh, over the course of the, the car's life, the 10 years, it uh, had two owners, third now. 
because she owns it. Yeah. And how many miles did it have on it? Uh, 32,000. 32,000 miles. So that, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. That's and, great. And typically, you know. company cars, to my knowledge, most yeah. company cars, they're taken care of. They get the oil yes. changed. They get the, yeah, the, the recalls done and that sort of thing. Well, and to that point, there were two open recalls on it because of Carfax notification. So she took care of those when she got the car. So it was all, all, up all up. above board. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think the part about recalls these days is really important. We've been talking a lot here about Takata recalls. The recall is 10 years old from the first time that NHTSA talked about Takata airbags, yet there are still um, more than 6.5 million cars, cars, not airbags, cars nationwide that need these airbags out. There's nearly 800,000 in the state of Texas that need to get these airbags replaced. Mm -hmm. And so it's been 10 years, but clearly we're not we in the, in the automotive media are not making enough noise to get consumers to wake up and get those uh, recalls taken care of. What do you think the problem is there? Well, you know, in talking about um, his daughter's car, she's the third owner, um, and they had only found out about the recalls through Carfax. So I think there's a few things at play here. One, recall notices come by mail, which is nobody's primary means of communication anymore. Secondly, I think some people get a recall notice and they think it's some kind of extended warranty marketing scam and they toss it aside. And then there are people who get it and they think, well, I'm going to get to this and a few weeks go by, a few months go by. And they're like, you know what? Nothing's happening in my car. I must be safe. And unfortunately, it's just not the case. Well, and and some of them, people look at it. My granddaughter's car has a recall on it. Some issue with the radio. She doesn't use the radio and I keep telling her about it. She keeps saying, I'm going to go get it fixed when I have time. But she uses her, her media device, her phone, ties right. into her audio system. So she really doesn't care if the radio ever gets fixed. Well, a lot of times that radio is the hub or the computer for the car. Because on my pod in my Cadillac, everything runs through that. So if that pod goes out for whatever reason, you're losing other features of the vehicle, the radio, maybe your air conditioning, or maybe some light configurations on your dash. Yeah. Everything runs through that. The it's interesting you should say that because sorry I'm Patrick we're now. having a little discussion here but, <laughs> no, no, you're good. I, but um, you know in my car my Corvette it doesn't run through the radio it's got it's own set of ways to get into the computer through a set of uh, buttons yeah, over here yeah, right yeah. outside of the uh, the instrument panel so there are different ways but right. yes I think that the radio originally was the way to get into or gain access to the car's computer right. Patrick yeah I, I think you guys are both right that I, you know the approach has changed the issue though is as you all have pointed out no one clearly knows the extent of the reach of that radio, right? So get the work done, whether you use that thing or not. I would say get the work done because you don't know if there's some connection to a module that sets the air, you know, for the passenger airbag exactly. notification. Yep. Does that uh, come through there? I don't know. But I, agree I, with I you, would but not leave an open recall on any car I had because one, it's going to affect your value when you go to sell it. And two, um, you just want to be completely have complete peace of mind and get that work done. So I want to sell my car. Do okay. I list it on Carfax? You cannot. So what we do, we only work with dealers. So uh, dealers pay a subscription fee to us to uh, list their inventory on Carfax. Um, and when they do, they agree to provide the free Carfax report with that listing. Uh-huh. Um, so if I were you, I would I would find you know a, a broker or somebody, you know, if we're talking about your Corvette again, uh, a very specific car. I would treat that sale very differently than a Camry or a Malibu, for example. Right. That's interesting. I did not know that. So yeah. the the dealer is the real key there. So if I sell it to the dealer and I go look up the car on Carfax that I'm interested in, that's yes. going to be through a dealer somewhere, and it's going to point me in that direction. Absolutely. And the great thing about Carfax is we have millions of dealer ratings. So when people buy a car, when people uh, send a lead to a dealership about a car, we'll ask those users to rate those dealerships. So we have, you know, for any, excuse me, any major dealership in your area, we'll have hundreds if not thousands of reviews that will tell you which are the ones that people love and which are the ones that people avoid. I, I just find the whole thing, you know, the way that Carfax has through the years done different things things and gained yes. popularity and has, has infiltrated our lives really yeah. in a yeah. good way uh it, it's truly amazing 
oh, it's, you know, it's our 40th year this year. So for us, it's a big year, but we are no longer just vehicle history reports. We are, you know, we use car listings. We're now we're new car listings. We have our car care app where you can track all of the work you do on your car, get reminded when more work is done totally for free. Um, I mean, we are now throughout that whole life cycle. We're not just the last thing you do before you buy. We are now the app where we have the information you need for the entire cycle of that car. You can shop with us now, look at our reviews, look at our rankings, pick the car you want, find a local dealer, buy it, own it, maintain it over that time, get ready to sell it. You can use our sell my car feature or you can, you know, uh, take it to a private party or dealership. So anything, essentially anything with a VIN number you can track. Everything with a number we can track. Yes, not, although not, we don't do all? things like motorcycles. I was going to say, do, yeah, yeah. Uh, boats, yeah. Uh, motorcycles. Right. Yeah, we don't do that. We don't do that. Just okay. but primarily so, vehicles. Yeah. So if Don's 2001 Corvette, did I, if you were talking about sending out notifications, is there a way he could register his Corvette so that you send him reminders, time to get your inspection or whatever, whatever? Yep. My guess is is that my, that Corvette is already in Carfax's hands, <laughs> yeah. and they know that. Well, let's yeah. just say, right. but, but well, let's, uh, that's okay. that's the beauty of our car care app. Is all you got to do is plug in the VIN, and there's no charge ever. And we will a we will look and you know tell you what all you've had done, and we will allow you, if you are someone who changes oil yourself, you can put in there, here's my receipt from the oil I bought. It won't be on your vehicle history report, but it'll be in the app where you can show it to a potential buyer. Um, okay, okay. And it will tell you, your, your registration is coming due. It'll tell you it's time for a tire rotation. It'll tell you it's time for your 50,000 mile blah, blah, blah tune-up, right, with all the parts that are involved yeah. there. Yeah. See, I can so, see, Don takes very good care of his car, obviously, yeah. but I can see where somebody... That, that might not pay as much attention to their car yes. could definitely use something like that. Here's your reminder. Right. Well, well, I, get, I, have, I get my oil changed when, when it's got like 90% oil life left. <laughs> you know, I, I just don't drive it that much. You. Wait, yeah. like it's wait a minute. I just thought of something here. All the stuff that I've helped you with, I should be Carfax. Yeah. I, I've, I've done that'd all be, kinds of stuff Jeff in your car. Facts. Yeah. Jeff Fax. Jeff Fax. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say Carfax is a registered trademark. Ah, so, you know, uh, be careful. Okay. okay. Yeah, all right. Exactly. Well, great information as always. And we, we thoroughly, really deeply appreciate uh, all the information you got. We love Carfax. We're big fans. And thanks again, Carfax.com. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate it. Okay. Thank Patrick, you bet. Yeah. You take care. Good stuff. It is good stuff. All right. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. Grab a podcast anytime from your favorite podcast provider. We also video stream our live three-hour weekly show on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues. Monday. 